If you want to get into cybersecurity, then the knowledge of networking or network engineering is paramount. Take for example a hacker who wants to gain as much knowledge as they want about a target system or environment. They leverage the network and run scans like Nmap, for example, which gives them all the information about open ports, protocols, services, etc. Similarly, if you are a defense cybersecurity engineer, you need to know all about networking if you want to secure your organization. Look at most of the cybersecurity roles like SOC analysts, ethical hackers, penetration testers, network security engineers, all of these roles require networking as a prerequisite. Hence, if you're one of those who's thinking of neglecting this domain, stop. In this video, I'm going to be telling you all about networking in cybersecurity. How exactly is networking used within this domain? And what are the different things you need to study to strengthen your foundations in cybersecurity? How's it going, guys? And welcome to The Social Dork. My name is Royden and I work as a cybersecurity specialist. And if you see my journey, I started off as a network engineer first and worked in that domain for two years. And after that, I then transitioned into this huge domain of cybersecurity. The way I'm going to structure this video is that there are going to be two parts. In the first part of the video, we look at how exactly is networking used within cybersecurity. And in the second part, we look at the different things you've got to study if you want to strengthen your foundations within networking. So if you want to go straight to the part to see what are the different topics you need to cover from a study perspective, please feel free to use the timestamps and just skip over to that section. Okay, so looking at where is networking used within cybersecurity. The first and the most important thing is network monitoring and traffic logs. As I've been speaking about this in this video is that every device connects into the network leaves some traces behind in the form of logs. Let's take for example, you've got a source user, which is a laptop and a destination server. When these two devices are communicating with each other, all of the messages that they exchange for end-to-end -end communication is available in the form of logs. And these logs play a huge role within cybersecurity. I mean, if you work in a SOC analyst role, reading and understanding of network logs is so important because it gives you a complete picture of what's going on within the network. Whether you've got any malicious activity, whether you've got any hackers, whether you've got any devices that are being targeted, all of that stuff can easily be found out using network logs. Therefore, if you see any organization where they want to strengthen their security posture, they make it a point that network logs from all of these devices are ingested into SIEM solutions so that full control over your network can be achieved. Before proceeding any further, I would like to thank Wondershare Filmora for sponsoring this video. Wondershare Filmora is a video editing tool that is at the top of its game. And in their latest versions, this tool leverages the use of AI to edit videos seamlessly and to perfection. Some of their best features include the AI-powered visuals and captions. Let's say, for example, you record your insights. You can just import your video into Wondershare Filmora and you can let the AI do the job. There's no need of spending hours editing and tweaking every frame. With its AI-powered features, I can select from different styles and it completely matches the genre that I'm going with. You also have different customizable styles. Let's say, for example, you're recording your own podcast or your own YouTube video, for example. You can select out of 10 different AI-powered styles within Wondershare Filmora. You can customize each element to relate to your brand and this helps your video stand out. For example, let me tweak the style on this video. You can see how easy it is to, let's say, for example, do color grading or add watermarking to my videos just so that it can match the brand of my channel. And you've also got a highlight clip creation feature. Let's say you record like a 10 minute long video. You can ask Wondershare Filmora to create a short highlight from that video for you. And finally, this last feature, which is the AI audio to video feature is my personal favorite. Sometimes I can get pretty lazy. So just having the option to convert what I speak my audio files into matching video content is amazing. All you've got to do is just import your audio and let Wondershare Filmora do the rest for you. This helps you save hours of editing time. Therefore, if you want to make videos or podcasts, I highly recommend checking Wondershare Filmora out. The link is going to be in the description. Do give it a test and let me know how you liked it. Secondly, you've got these devices called as firewalls, which are perimeter devices, which are also the heart of network security. Firewalls generally sit at the edge of your network and they police any traffic that's either coming in or going out of your network. So let's say you've got a malicious user who's trying to access company resources or trying to target your organization. The firewall is the system which sits at the edge and blocks all of these threats. Firewalls today can do everything such as URL filtering, SSL decryption, blocking based on applications, quality of service, 
And as a result of this, these firewalls are called as next generation firewalls. These firewalls can also contain modules which do the work of an IDS or an IPS. An IDS is an intrusion detection system and an IPS is an intrusion prevention system. And both of these in tandem are used to block cyber threats. If we move away from firewalls, you then have something called as network segmentation or the use of VLANs. Network segmentation is also called as isolation of the network or breaking down your physical local area network into multiple virtual LANs. The main reason for this is, is so that different departments or different users are isolated in their own networks and they don't get access to other resources that let's say for example they don't need access to. This helps in reducing lateral movement when there's a breach. A classic example of this is in the video that I've made on a real life security incident. The link is going to be in the description. Do watch it out. It covers everything on how exactly a real security incident takes place and what does a cybersecurity engineer do to protect it. And finally, networking also has a huge role in data that's either entering or exiting the network. What I mean by this is, is that let's say, for example, you've got servers that have all sorts of data on them. You've got to ensure that these servers and these blocks of data that are sitting on these servers are well encrypted. This is called as encryption of data at rest. Good networking and encryption standards are crucial to ensure that your data is protected. Similarly, any data that's traversing within your network, also called as data in transit, needs to be encrypted with good networking standards and protocols so that no attacker or hacker who's sitting there trying to sniff your packets can get any clue or any information. So as you can see, there is such a huge footprint of networking and network engineering within the cybersecurity domain. Moving into the next phase, which is what exactly you need to study from a networking perspective to have good foundations in cybersecurity. The first thing that you need to know is IP addressing and subnetting. IP addresses are addresses that are assigned to devices so that they can communicate with each other over the network. An IP address is a 32-bit address and you've got different classes within IP addresses. The knowledge of IP addressing and subnetting is important because all of these devices that are communicating over the network use IP addresses to communicate with each other. Subnetting comes into the picture where it helps you understand how big your network could be or how many smaller pieces you can break your network into. In saying that, you don't need to go into the depths of subnetting. Rather, you just need to know how many IP addresses are present within a network, how many usable hosts you can have, what is a broadcast address. Um, you don't need to look at variable length subnet masking and all of those advanced subnetting questions because that gets a little too much. We just want to do the basis that covers us from a cybersecurity perspective and just understanding what IP addresses are and knowing how you calculate most common subnets will go a very long way. After knowing IP addressing and subnetting, you'll also probably need to know the TCP IP and the OSI model. The OSI model is one of the first things that you learn if you want to be a network engineer because it exactly tells you how data goes from one end to the other end. There are different layers that are responsible for successful communication between two devices and they are the physical data link network transport session presentation and application layer let's say for example you're trying to watch this video on youtube the whole communication that takes place from your machine to youtube servers somewhere in the world all follows the different layers of the osi model what exactly goes on at the physical layer the data link layer um, ip addresses at the network layer how are port numbers used at the transport layer what do the session presentation and application layer do are pretty important because if you want to secure your system or if you want to secure your network, you need to first understand how exactly is your network even functioning and understanding and knowing the OSI model will give you that benefit. After this, you also need to know ports, protocols and services. When I say ports, I'm talking about the most common ports, for example, HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, SMTP, DNS, etc. And what exactly you mean by ports? is let's say you're trying to access any services on a server or even on another machine. Ports are responsible for establishing connections from point A to point B. If you know how to use Nmap, you can run an Nmap scan on a machine or on the network and you can see that the output will show you all of the different open ports on a specific machine or on different machines within the network. And the reason for that is because these open ports itself are things that are used by hackers or attackers when they want to exploit a system. Similarly, speaking about the protocols itself, like on your network layer, you've got IP, which is internet protocol. You've also got uh, TCP and UDP at the transport layer. Similarly, you've got other protocols like you've got DNS, you've got HTTP, you've got HTTPS, SSH, etc. 
these protocols are the backbone of networking or they are the backbone of any communication within a network between two devices. Moving on to packet analysis and Wireshark. In this video, I've already spoken about how you've got network logs and traces that are left behind from communications between different devices within a network. It's so important that you know how to read and understand these network logs because most of your malicious activity, if there's any that's taking place within your organization, would be visible at the network layer. Hence, being able to understand and read these network logs and perform any packet analysis in, let's say, Wireshark is crucial. You can watch videos on YouTube which cover free Wireshark tutorials. Um, probably you can watch, like, let's say, a video that's 20 to 30 minutes long, which will give you a good understanding of how exactly Wireshark is used. And even those that work in SOC analyst role will probably testify to this, is that the knowledge of Wireshark and how to use the tool is pretty important. And finally, you need to know about VPNs and proxies. A VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And what this does is it creates a secure tunnel from point A to point B. The most common one is an IPsec VPN. Therefore, as a security professional or from a cybersecurity perspective, you need to know what these IPsec VPNs are, how they are built, what is the basis for them, etc. And finally, talking about proxies, these are intermediary devices that sit, for example, let's say in front of a web server. So there are any requests that keep coming, let's say, to the web server. The proxy acts as a device in the middle and it adds an added layer of security so that any requests that are being sent to the web server first go through the proxy. With proxies, again, you've got different types like forward proxy, reverse proxy, transpend proxy, etc. Now, speaking about certifications, there are many certifications out there if you want to strengthen your foundations within networking. Two of the most common ones are the CCNA and the CompTIA Network Plus. If you want to do the CompTIA Network Plus, I've got a course which is going to be listed in the description. It's provided by Zero to Mastery. You can check the link. They've got like a nine hour course and it covers all of the topics for the CompTIA Network Plus. Similarly, for the CCNA, you can refer to CBD Nuggets or Jeremy IT on YouTube. Uh, they're pretty good CCNA playlists. And I've also got a video on whether the CCNA is important or not in today's day and age so you can check that link in the description as well so there you go guys this was all about networking and the importance of this field within cybersecurity. if you've liked this video i'd also encourage you to check a video that i've made on cybersecurity, everything about the domain if let's say you're new to cybersecurity and you want to know what are the different fields that exist within this domain and what interests you the most check that video out it will definitely help you on that note thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video